Stanford University. All right, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to uh, Music Appreciation 243. If you're not here for Music Appreciation 243, then you're in the wrong place. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, this is CS193P, iPhone application development. My name is Evan Dahl. I'm going to be one of the instructors for the class this quarter. Uh, my cohort, Alan Canestrero, will be coming up in a minute. Uh, actually, let's, let's go ahead and do it now. Um, get everyone up here so you can put some names to faces. Um, well, I'll, I guess I'll go for it. You guys can stay, stay seated. Uh, so my name is Evan. I am uh, an engineer at Apple. I work on iPhone frameworks and applications. I've been at Apple for uh, a little over five years. I uh, went to Stanford prior to that. So I was Stanford CS 2003. Uh, and Al, you want to come up and sure. tell us your life story? Life story, okay. So, uh, my name is Alan Canestrero. I'm a 2000 graduate from University of Waterloo, computer engineering. I've been at Apple since then, so nine years. Um, worked on all kinds of stuff, but most recently the remote app for the phone. Um, what else? I teach another course, or taught another course at uh, UCLA in uh, digital DJing. So, uh, my interests are music and video. So, if you guys have any apps along those lines, I'm always interested to see them. So. Great. Thanks, Al. Uh, our two TAs for the course this quarter are going to be Troy Brandt and Paul Salzman. Uh, Troy was one of our TAs last time around, and I'm sure he's got some sort of song and dance for us. Um, no song and dance, actually. But um, yeah, I'm a second year master's student in the computer science program. Um, and TA the course last fall, had a great time. Uh, decided to come back and do it again. Sure, why not? <laughs> so we, um, I'm Paul. Uh, I took the course last uh, autumn when they first offered it. I'm a first year master's student here at Stanford. And, yeah. and your interests include? <laughs> Rick Astley, mostly. <laughs> uh, and finally, we, we have another sort of behind the scenes helper with the course this time around. Uh, Paul Marcos, he and I taught the, the inaugural version of 193P in the fall. Um, and uh, Paul is going to be, well, I'll let him tell, tell his story. Uh, so I'm Paul Marcos. I recognize a couple of the faces from the fall quarter. Um, so a little bit of background about me. I've been at Apple for uh, just earlier this week, 15 years. So I'm kind of the, the grandfather of the crowd up here. Um, my role this, this quarter is not going to be lecturing. I lectured with Evan uh, in the fall. I'm going to be kind of doing more of the administrative side, helping out the TAs with some stuff probably uh, helping out with grading, answering questions. So you won't see me here in lecture very much, um, but I will be re responding on the class mailing list. Um, and I think that's, that's about it. So if you send an email to the 193P list and uh, you get a response from some guy who you've never seen a lecture before except for today, it's probably Paul helping out behind the scenes. So uh, he's going to be providing some invaluable expertise for us on that front. Uh, quick, quick, just sort of get the lay of the land, figure out who's, who's here, what you guys have experience with. Um, can I just get a show of hands if you're familiar with um, object-oriented programming in any form? Looks like just about everyone. Okay, that's impressive. Um, how about, how many of you have developed software with Mac OS X before? Using any sort of development tools, whether it's Xcode or Eclipse or who knows what else, GCC? Okay, fair number. And uh, finally, how many of you have actually tried writing apps for the iPhone? Guessing probably more than in the fall. Yeah, a fair number, maybe 10%. Um, great. So I mean, it seems like you know everyone's sort of coming in here with the, the necessary background and experience. Um, just to give a quick sort of, we're going to do a lot of logistical. Here's what's going on in the course type stuff. Uh, this lecture, uh, lectures. Obviously, if you're here, uh, you're aware of this this aspect of it. 32105 uh, in the Braun Braun Geology Corner here at Stanford. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, 3.15 to 4.30. Uh, we're going to have an optional section on Fridays. It's not going to be on every Friday. So keep an eye on lecture slides and the course website for announcements about that. We're, we're going to be reserving that for sort of interesting topics that don't exactly fit within the, the structure of our lectures. Uh, so there's going to be some guest speakers, some folks coming from different companies um, who've developed iPhone apps or just have an interesting story to tell. Um, also just some additional topics which don't really fit into 
you know, the sort of the, the, the path that we're taking through iPhone development through the bulk of the course, but you, you may find interesting. Um, the first one is going to be next Friday uh, on the 10th. Uh, Paul Marcos actually is going to be running it, and he's going to be giving you sort of a crash course, boot camp, everything you need to know about um, debugging iPhone applications. So one thing that we got a lot of questions about last time around um, from people was, you know, my application crashed, what do I do? Or, you know, I'm getting this weird error and I don't know what's going on. You know, how do I use the tools um, provided with the iPhone SDK to, to solve this problem? Um, it's, a, it's a pretty valuable thing to know, um, especially using the debugger and figuring out what your, what your program is doing during its execution. Um, so I really encourage you, especially if you're new to the platform, if you're new to, the iPhone, new to iPhone development, um, come and check that out and it'll save you a lot of grief down the road. Uh, and finally, as far as office hours go, um, Troy and Paul Salzman are each going to be holding office hours. Uh, I think it's still kind of TBD. It might be happening after class or before class. Um, but we'll, we'll throw something up on the website about that um, so you can get questions answered. Uh, unfortunately, Al and I, in addition to you know, teaching this class, we are full-time employees um, at Apple. So it's kind of tough for us to get back up here a third time during the week to, uh, to do office hours. But we'll be available on the mailing lists. And Troy and Paul Salzman will have some, uh, some on-campus office hours. Uh, real quickly, requirements, just sort of to get it out there so you know, you know what's going on. Um, the, the only real prerequisite that we have for this course is um, CS106B slash X, so you should be familiar with, I guess it's not in, in C anymore, but um, you should have some, some basic level of programming experience. Um, we don't have a recommended book for the quarter. We're, we're going to be leaning on our, our lecture slides, some handouts, um, and the documentation available on Apple's website. Um, there's a lot of online resources for iPhone application development right now. Uh, the lack of the book is really, you know, the, uh, Al and I aren't that familiar with, with what's out there, and we, we figured we would just stick with the, stick with the materials that we've been developing. Um, really important, you must have access to an Intel-based Macintosh um, to do the assignments for this course. The iPhone development tools are not available on Windows or, you know, Linux or, or what have you. Um, so you've got to have access to a Mac uh, running 10.5 Leopard. Um, plenty of people last time around, they had a roommate or a friend who loaned them a MacBook for the quarter. If you've got someone who's that generous, or at least allowing to sort of have a timeshare arrangement with you, then that, that may work. Um, but, but if you straight up don't have a Mac, um, don't have any access to one, then, then you're going to have uh, problems. Um, one important note there is that the cluster computers um, are currently not available for iPhone development because you can't install the iPhone SDK on, on the cluster computers. So um, so the cluster computers, whether it's in your dorm or, or elsewhere, are not really an option. Uh, finally, in terms of having an iPhone or an iPod Touch, we don't require that for this course. Um, all the assignments that we're going to be doing that we're going to be requiring you to do uh, can be done using the simulator, which is another part of iPhone app development, which we're going to talk about. Um, so you're going to be fine if you don't have an iPhone. If you do have one, uh, great. You're going to be able to do, do development on your iPhone or iPod Touch as well. Um, we are looking into, it's not fully nailed down, but we're looking into having some loaner iPod touches available um, for those of you who want to do on-device development um, to try that out. We're not going to be showering you with free hardware like, you know, yeah, it would be nice, but we're not able to do it this time around. So that's going to be sort of the situation in terms of developing for an actual device. Um, enrollment. So obviously, we've got a lot, of, a lot of people here. I think this uh, lecture room seats 100, 105. Um, the basic deal is, uh, obviously, re the response has been, has been phenomenal, just like in the fall. We've got a lot of people who want to take the course. Uh, in terms of the resources that we have for grading and just dealing with um, questions from students, we have the resources to take about 60 students. Um, and the way we've broken that down is 40 slots for students taking it for a grade and 20 PNC. Um, so right now, if you're signed up on Access, that's great. It doesn't mean you've got a spot locked down in the course for, for a grade or for credit. Um, so in order to figure out you know, who, who gets to enroll in the course and who doesn't, um, we've got a, a survey. Many of you have already, already filled out. There's a link from the course website, and there's, uh, the URL is here as well. Um, so please, if you want to take the class for credit and you're you know, a Stanford student, fill it out. It'll have a field for your SUID and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you need to fill it out by noon tomorrow. If you don't have it filled out by noon tomorrow, you're not going to be eligible for enrollment. Um, so you know, when you get done with class, go back to your dorm. Just, just get it done, fill it out, because we're not going to make any room for people who, who fill it out late. 
Um, and one of the questions on there is it, it's going to ask you whether you're willing to take the class PNC. So be sure to fill that out and let us know whether that's an option for you. Um, and in terms of how we're going to determine enrollment, um, it's going to be based on a combination of factors, but partly um, you know, your, your prior CS courses, both here or, or elsewhere, maybe you're a grad student. Um, other relevant, relevant experience in the field, sort of success factors. We, we don't want people um, you know, enrolling in the course who you know, don't know what pointers are or aren't comfortable with, with C programming. Um, also, the number of quarters you've got left at Stanford, kind of an unfortunate, unfortunate reality. But um, you know, if you're a senior and this is your last chance to take the course, um, we may give you, give you a nudge. Um, and also your major, if you're a CS major, that, that may help as well. So fill it out to, to the best of your abilities. Please know, um, you know multi-page essays in the tell us about yourself field because we probably won't have time to, time to, time to read it. Um, and it's also important to note, you know, if you're just interested in, in iPhone app development, um, non-enrolled students can still attend lectures, you know, ask questions to a reasonable extent. I mean, we're not going to be able to give you all the resources that we can um, you know, to, to enrolled students. But you're certainly welcome to come and absorb as much as you'd like. Are there any questions about, about this? All pretty straightforward. We're cool. Yeah? I'm curious, are you encouraging people to take it past fail, past credit or credit? Um, we are. Why the breakdown? Just purely for it, when, when you're PNC, the grading granularity can be a little bit different. Um, and that sort of allows our TAs to not be spending every waking hour grading assignments. So it's just sort of a, a, a load balancing optimization that we're, that we're doing. So, yeah. Yeah? Do you have an estimate of when decisions will be made? We're going to let you know, ideally, if everyone, you know, Everyone will have it filled out by noon tomorrow. I think we're going to be shooting for, you know, Friday or the weekend for a yes or no. We'll, we'll send you an email either way, let you know what's going on. And then if, if you're not enrolled in the class, we'll need you to, um, to drop the class on, on access. Yeah? Can you take the class as an auditor? Can you still access the assignments from some of the other courses here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, all of our assignments, um, lecture slides, uh, any other materials, sample code that we're going to be demoing in class, that's all going to be on the course website. So, um, and, you know, obviously you can come up and if there isn't a line of 20 people at waiting to ask questions, you can ask questions after class as well. So, um, yeah, we try to be pretty accommodating of, of auditors. We know that there's, there's simply demand that we can't, can't meet right now for the course. Um, Stanford has joined the iPhone Developer University Program. Basically what this means is that um, for on-device iPhone app development, normally you've got to enroll in this program, pay 99 bucks, and sort of get set up for, for actually you know, developing on hardware um, yourself. Through this program, you can do that without having to shell out any cash or jump through too many hoops. At least there'll be less, less hoops. So we're still feeling, feeling that whole thing out. Um, so you're going to be able to do that through, through the end of the quarter. Um, and we'll, we'll need you to uh, give us an at stanford.edu or at whatever.stanford.edu email address for enrollment uh, there. Um, you're going to need to click through a student agreement, which just basically says, what does that student agreement say? That you're a member of the, you're, you are an enrolled student. You're in the class. You know, just sort of, it, we're, we're not asking you to sign your, your life away or anything. Um, also, if you already are a member of the you know, iPhone developer program, you've, you've already signed up. Um, I mean, this is purely optional. It's, it's only if you, if you wanted to develop on hardware and you don't want to sign up. As an individual, yeah. Question. Um, so the question was, uh, how do auditors fit into the picture here? We're still not entirely sure. The um, the enrollment or the sorry, the number of students that you can include in the in the developer university program is 200, which ought to be plenty adequate for our auditors. We're we're just kind of making sure there aren't any other gotchas on that front, um, but we should have an answer to that pretty soon. Any other questions about the university program? So this is something that we, that we didn't really have last quarter. We sort of had to ad hoc figure out how to develop on actual devices. So this is going to streamline things a bit. Yeah, one more question. What is on-device development? Sorry. Um, the question was, what is on-device development? So when you're making an iPhone app, um, oftentimes you'll just be using the iPhone simulator, which is a program that runs on your Mac and allows you to sort of see what your iPhone application looks like as you're, as you're running it, as you're debugging it. It's sort of the quickest way to, to, tr to try you know, building an iPhone application. Um, in addition to that, because you really need to see what your application runs like on real hardware, 
Um, there, you can twiddle the settings in Xcode, which is the, the, the IDE, and actually send your built application to an iPhone that's connected to your computer um, and, and run it and test it on there. So, you know, the sort of two phases of your app development. You know, oftentimes when you're just quickly iterating, the simulator maybe makes more sense, but then when you want to, you know, debug performance issues, make sure that it actually works in the real world, um, there is no substitute for, for trying it out on the device. There are also features of the iPhone and iPod Touch, such as the accelerometer, um, which, you know, maybe are available to some degree on the simulator, but you really want to try it out on the phone to get it there. If you know, you want to do an application where you shake the device or something, you can't really shake the simulator. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, perhaps you could, we could build something in where you could shake the computer, but that's um, lower down the priority list. One more question. If you get accepted, so basically, the developer university program is something that you have the option to join if you're an enrolled student or possibly an auditor. I meant for uh, this class. Uh -huh. It's like uh, we get accepted. Uh huh. So the question was, are you obligated to take the course if you get accepted? Um, no, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, if you drop it, we'll um, we'll give your spot to someone else. But yeah, so yeah, you're not you're not handcuffed to us for the duration or anything. Um, one other topic which which bears mentioning today is uh, you know a couple of weeks ago there was an, an announcement about the uh, iPhone OS 3.0, which is in sort of a pre-release phase right now. Developers have access to it, um, but it's not available to the public. So if you go out, you know, plug your your iPhone into iTunes, it's not going to say, do you want to install iPhone OS 3.0? Um, <laughs> we're not going to be covering iPhone OS 3.0 in this, in this course this time around. Um, it's covered by an NDA. It's not really suitable for, for discussion in a, in a public forum. Um, however, uh, the, all the stuff in 3.0, it's really a superset of iPhone OS 2.0. It's not like we changed everything around, and now it's in, you know, you're writing iPhone apps in Lisp instead of Objective-C. Um, everything that we're going to be covering in this course is entirely valid, applicable, useful with iPhone OS 3.0. There's there've just been some new things, new features, uh, additions to the APIs. Um, so uh, just get it out there. We're not going to be talking about 3.0. If anyone, you know, if someone asks a question about 3.0, I'm going to pretend that I didn't hear you. Um, or yeah. So that's kind of the, the state of the state of things with iPhone OS 3.0. Uh, one final topic of note is that um, we're not going to be just including the, you know, enrolled students and auditors here in the classroom this time around, um, but actually the course is going to be on iTunes U. So uh, anyone out there who has, you know, an internet connection and a pulse can uh, go to iTunes and download our lectures and our lecture slides uh, for free, right? For free? For free. Um, so this is kind of a big deal. It's, a, it's, it's an experiment. We're sort of trying it out for the first time um, you know, with this course uh, because there's been a tremendous demand for access to the lecture videos uh, in the previous times we've taught the course. So uh, hopefully it all works out and we can you know, expand our audience um, even more. So if you're an enrolled student, the impact that this has on you is that um, we are going to be videotaping the course. Um, so there's a possibility that you know, the back of your head may be included in some video up on iTunes. Uh, if, you have to, if you ask a question, we actually do not have the audience mic'd. Um, so you, pr your voice probably won't really be on the, the, the recording, but it's possible. Who knows? Um, also, if, I, if people ask questions and I forget to repeat the questions, you can kind of throw things at me and I'll remember to repeat the questions for our audience on iTunes U. Um, and really the most salient feature is that this is not a substitute for attending classes. It's not like SCPD where you're going to have the lecture online within hours of, of the course ending. Um, we're shooting for a couple of day turnaround time on the lectures. So if you're relying solely on the iTunes U um, feed for you know, hearing about assignments or figuring out how to complete the next assignment, uh, you're probably not going to be in great shape. So really, um, you need to be able to come to the class. Um, for the folks on iTunes U, uh, first of all, welcome to Stanford. Um, you know, hope to see you all at the next uh, full moon on the quad. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah look that up on Wikipedia. Um, and your feedback, suggestions are all, are all welcome. Um, you know, we'd love to hear if you have any, you know, comments ab about topics that we could, you know, include in the course. Um, one important caveat, though, is that we, we simply don't have the resources to answer 
every individual question that comes to us you know, over the internet. So if you're, if you're watching on iTunes U and you're halfway around the world, great, we're, we're totally psyched that you're interested in the course, that you're doing the assignments along with us. If, if you have a question um, as you're doing the assignments, um, we're not going to be able to answer that over email. Uh, one great place where you can get those questions answered, um, whether you're in the course or you're on iTunes U or, or whatever, um, is devforums.apple.com. Um, and actually, devforums.apple.com is a place where you can discuss the iPhone OS 3.0 beta as well. So if you're doing some work, if you've signed up a, as an individual and you have some questions about that, that's a great place to, to get questions answered. Um, so welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, and uh, you know, don't, don't be offended if you send us an email and we, we don't get back to you, because we probably won't. Uh, sort of along those same lines, in terms of getting, getting more information, um, you can always email, you meaning enrolled students, auditing students. Uh, you can email cs193p at cs.stanford.edu. And um, almost immediately, you will get a response. Well, may not, yeah. At, at some point in the relatively near future, you will get a response from one of us. Um, this is for questions about assignments, for questions about course logistics, um, any, of that, any of that sort of stuff. What other types of questions do we get? Spiritual guidance. Spiritual guidance. Um, yeah, you know, we'll take it all. Uh, and yeah, enrolled students only, please. Well, auditors, you're kind of in a gray area. Uh, the course website, cs193p.stanford.edu. Uh, that is where you're going to be able to get uh, lecture slides, assignments, any other handouts, code samples. Um, the syllabus is on there. So if you want to read the detailed syllabus of what we're going to be covering each week, you can, uh, you can access that. And this website is open, open to the public. Um, and then a couple of other websites that may be of interest to you. First of all, the iPhone Dev Center which is a place where you can get documentation. It's where you go to download the SDK. It's where you can go to download um, sample code. Uh, and there, there's you know, FAQs and all that sort of stuff. So that's a great place to start if you have questions or if you just need something. Um, and also the aforementioned developer forums. It's a great place to talk with other developers. There are actually Apple, Apple engineers and other Apple employees on the developer forums uh, answering questions. So that's a great, great place to go. Uh, any questions about any of this stuff so far? Sort of where you get information, uh, the iTunes U stuff, any concerns about that? Yeah? If you're enrolled in the university program, mm -hmm. can you develop for the 3.0? Uh, the, so the question was, if you're, enrolled, if you're enrolled in the course and you're a member of the iPhone Developer University program, can you develop for iPhone OS 3.0? Um, my understanding of that right now is the answer is no. Um, if you want to develop for 3.0, you can actually um, do that on your own without, without you know, paying, paying any money or anything like that um, with, with the simulator, correct? I believe that's true. I, I believe that's true. Um, so, so let me answer that more succinctly. If you're a member of the Developer University program, that doesn't mean you can get access to 3.0, but you can get access to 3.0 fairly easily um, through other means just by signing up as, as an individual. Any other questions? OK, we're cool. All right, so uh, why are we here? Uh, leaving aside these sort of existential uh, aspects of that question, we're going to keep it kind of focused today. Um, we're here because we want to make applications for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Uh, I think the most recent, most recent numbers <clears throat> were something like 30 million devices have been shipped, iPhones and iPod Touches. Um, so there are 30 million you know, iPhones and iPod Touches out there where people are downloading apps on the App Store, they're interested in iPhone apps. Um, so there's a pretty big potential audience for whatever it is your, your dream is to, to make on the iPhone, whether it's, you know, some thing where you shake it and it makes noises or a game or, you know, the next, uh, the next Facebook or whatever. Uh, it's a it's great market. It's, it's growing very quickly and um, there are a lot of interesting applications. Uh, in addition to that, though, we really like to think that CS193P is not just about iPhone and Mac development. Um, it's about really real-world software engineering and a lot of the design practices and patterns and um, you know, sort of things that, things that you may not have been exposed to in other CS classes at Stanford. So we try to expose um, some of those things to you, problems and solutions that you might not see in other classes. And it's really our idea is that it's you know, sort of real-world software engineering from an iPhone app development perspective. Um, sort of related to that, you know, we're, we're going to be using Cocoa Touch with the iPhone SDK. And just to give you a little bit of background on what Cocoa Touch is, 
Um, it's based on Coco, which is the application development framework on, um, on Mac OS X for making apps for the Mac. Uh, it's been around for a surprisingly long time. Paul, give me ballpark here, like 20, 20 some odd years um, in, in various forms, first on Next Step, um, and now on the Mac, and now on the iPhone. So it's, it's, been, it's been around for a while, it's polished, it's got almost all of the things that you would expect in an iPhone, or in an application development framework. Um, and the idea is that it's sort of, you know, when you're, when you're building an app and you want to go from idea to prototype, um, it starts you out from the, from the 20th floor of the building rather than from the basement. So it gives you a big head start. A lot of the, the primitives, a lot of the really basic things that you might need to roll, roll your own in, in other frameworks are there for you. Um, it's designed to be really, you can get up and running very quickly with an application. Um, and it, it, we like to think that it shows real world implementations of you know, object-oriented design patterns. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, the idea of design patterns, whether it's with a capital D and P or, or, or not, um, but things like um, chain of responsibility, delegation, um, a lot of these sort of patterns which um, have been found to be very useful in object-oriented programming um, are sort of represented in, in the Cocoa frameworks. Um, and it's worth mentioning, you know, the designs and, and the tools that you learn here are directly applicable to development for the Mac. So uh, if you want to make some great Mac app and you've been writing iPhone apps, um, a lot of the stuff you learn is going, to be, is going to be very relevant. We'll talk some more about the details of that. So that's kind of where we're coming from, iPhone apps using Cocoa Touch. Um, starting to dig a little bit more deeply and specifically as far as what we're covering this quarter, um, sort of a high level of overview of, of the new things we're going to be encountering here. Um, some of the tools that we're going to be using are Xcode and Interface Builder. Xcode is the, is the IDE for Mac and iPhone applications. Um, it's an editor. It's where you will build and debug. And um, even you know, when you plug your iPhone into the computer and you want to develop on it, Xcode is the gateway through which you, um, you manage that. Uh, interfa interface Builder is a graphical tool for, for laying out your user interface. Um, it's a, it's a, pretty, a pretty unique and, and, and cool tool for, for doing this. Um, and, it, and it's pretty tightly integrated with Xcode and all the rest of the iPhone uh, development stack. Uh, on the framework side, we're going to be using a couple of frameworks, uh, Foundation and UIKit. These are going to be your points of contact, uh, the places you're going to be living in terms of iPhone app development. And you're going to be doing all this in the Objective-C programming language. Um, so Objective-C may be a little bit foreign to some, most of you, um, but uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about why Objective-C and what the deal is with Objective-C. Um, first of all, you know, exposure to other languages is always good. I mean, hopefully, especially if you've, if you've been doing computer science for a few years, you're kind of at the point where if you need to learn a new language for some project or some class, it's not really a big deal. You know, Programming languages are program programming languages. Uh, they have their pros and their cons and their oddities. And you like some of them more than you like others. Um, Objective-C is a language. It's really focused on being simple and elegant, kind of you know, minimalistic, whereas maybe C++, which is another C-derived um, object-oriented programming language, kind of throws, throws the kitchen sink at you. And you know, there's, there's a lot there. Uh, Objective-C tries to be a little bit more, um, more spare and, uh, and elegant. Uh, it's based on plain old C that you know probably most of you have exposure with, and actually it's a strict superset. So any C C code is valid Objective C code. Um, and you know if you're if you've been doing some object oriented programming, it's 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 another it's another data point to compare to C plus plus, Java, um, you know Ruby, whatever other languages you've you've worked with. It, you can sort of expand your world, even if you don't see yourself writing Objective C code five or ten years down the road. It's, um, it's another sort of stop on your journey as an object-oriented programmer. Uh, any questions about that so far? Objective-C, what's the deal? All right, so it's something new to learn, but uh, I, I think you'll find it to be pretty, pretty elegant and, and easy to use. Um, the, the first time I encountered Objective-C was during my um, you know, spring quarter, senior year, my, my final, my senior programming project. And you know you spend you spend a week or two getting up to speed, learning the new language, and really after that you're just kind of you, you forget that it's different from anything else you've learned in the past. So hopefully the rest of you will have a similarly easy um, ramping up with it. Um, let's talk specifically about the apps that you're going to be building. 
during the course of, the, of, of this class. Um, we've got a, a couple of, you know, starting at the very beginning, you know, hello world type, type applications. Well, actually, it's going to be called Hello Stanford. Um, for just for learning the tools, making sure that you've got the SDK installed correctly, um, sort of basic getting up and running and familiarizing yourself with, with the language, with the runtime, and with the frameworks. Um, we're then going to write, spend a couple of weeks writing uh, an application called Hello Poly, which is going to be sort of uh, bare, you know, it's, it's, it's going to introduce you to writing, uh, a, you know, a GUI app using the iPhone frameworks. Um, and then we're going to spend a good chunk of the middle of the course building, um, building a project. It's a multi-week type thing. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, at the end of the course, the last three weeks, you're going to be uh, working on a final project of your own choosing. Um, as far as the grading on the assignments, is going to be pretty similar to what you've seen in other CS classes at Stanford. Um, the grading is going to be pretty simple. We're going to throw you into a bucket, either check, uh, which means you, you did a great job on the assignment, you, fu you fulfilled all the requirements. Uh, check plus, which means you went you know, totally above and beyond. You, you did extra credit. You really just you know, turned in a true gem of an assignment. Uh, check minus means that you maybe missed something, and um, you got, there's things to work on. Are, are most people familiar with the check, check plus, check minus grading system? Can I get a show of hands if you've seen it before? Most people, OK. Um, the late policy, again, kind of standard in Stanford, in Stanford CS. Uh, you've got three late days. These are 24-hour periods to be used at your discretion. Um, so if you choose to use a late day, you actually don't even really need to, you don't need to ask permission. You can just use it and, and note it in your, in your submission notes for the assignment. Um, you can use them whenever you want, save them up for the end of the quarter. Um, you cannot use them for the final project. So, uh, you know, if you've got some late days to burn and it's the last present assignment, you might as well, might as well use it. Um, <laughs> and um, I should also mention, so the final project, it's of your choice, and we're going to try to do end of the quarter demos at Apple. We did this last time. We weren't sure how it was going to work because we had, you know, 50 students in the course. Um, but it actually worked out pretty well. Everyone came down to Apple with their, their iPhone apps and showed them off, and, you know, a bunch of, you know, Apple engineers were checking things out, and it, it, was, it was pretty fun. So hopefully we can make that happen again this time around. Um, so speaking specifically about the, the very, very first assignment, which is going to be available on the website today, um, and it's going to be due next Thursday on the 9th, um, it's sort of intended to get you situated, make sure that you, again, have the SDK downloaded and installed correctly, um, getting started with Objective-C. It includes a pretty thorough walkthrough. So we're not going to talk that much about the assignment in class, but when you download it, download the, the PDF, it's going to pretty much hold your hand and, and make sure that you're not missing anything when it comes to getting up and running. Um, and we would really encourage you to try and get started with it before the next lecture um, so that if you have questions, you know, you, you downloaded the iPhone SDK and your computer caught on fire, um, we can try and get it worked out before, you know, nip it in the bud early in the quarter and make sure that you're, you're on the right track. Um, we're going to continue building on that. We have a couple more assignments, and then we're going to jump into this sort of multi-week, four-week assignment. Uh, it's going to be called Presence, and uh, I like to think of it as really the, the hello world of iPhone applications, which is a Twitter client, because you know there are plenty of Twitter clients out there, and um, you know the world always needs another one. Um, it, or most people here are familiar with Twitter. It's been getting a lot of press lately, kind of, sort of. It's a, it's a service website. There, there are various means of accessing Twitter where you can um, you know, sort of type in what you're doing, what you're thinking, and allow people. It's, it's like reverse stalking. You can inform the world <laughs> about the fact that you're, that you're standing in line waiting to buy something at the grocery store and the, something, whatever, just happened. So that's uh, whatever. That, 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 that's my definition. Um, and each assignment, so tw there's going to be four parts of this Twitter application. We're going to build on it gradually. Um, and you really need to make sure that you're, you're staying up to speed because um, each, each assignment is going to build on the previous one. So if you, if you get lost or things are not looking so good on the first assignment, let us know and we'll, we'll make sure that you're on the right track because otherwise you're going to have four check minuses in, in the spreadsheet next to your name. Uh, this is kind of what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a pretty typical iPhone application with you know, lists of data, um, you can tap on the stuff to show, show uh, more details. Um, we're going to leave you some latitude in terms of implementing it, and uh, especially in terms of extra credit. If there are features that you want to add, um, you're going to have room to do that. Just make sure that we know about it so that when we grade your assignment, we, uh, we know to look for it and we don't miss your totally cool you know, shake to reload feature or something like that. Um, 
And what we're going to cover during the course of, of this assignment, we're going to try and you know, connect a lot of topics together into a, into a story about iPhone application development. So you're not just going to be learning topics A, B, C, D, all in isolation. They're going to fit together um, in, the, in this project. So um, you know, application design patterns, sort of high level, how, how does an application fit together? What are some ways to, um, to architect the data flow and make all the pieces fit together in a maintainable way? Um, view controllers are a pretty central aspect to many iPhone applications. We're going to figure out, you know, learn what they are and how they fit uh, in iPhone apps. Um, displaying data, table views are really, really common in iPhone applications. Almost, I mean, almost every iPhone application has table views someplace because inevitably you've got you know, a list of hundreds of things, whether it's address book contacts, songs, um, bookmarks, where it's, it's not going to fit on that, on that 480 by 320 screen. So table views are, are a great way to show lots of data um, in, a, in a way that's familiar to the user. Um, dealing with local and re remote data is something that's really important because uh, inevitably your users are going to be entering data, they're going to be pulling data down from, from the cloud, from the internet, whatever, using, uh, using a lot of different uh, types of services, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, text input, uh, multi-threading, a lot of just really core concepts for iPhone application development. We're going to, we're going to try and cover them. Um, and if there are topics that you want, that you're interested in, that you want to make sure that we cover, uh, let us know and we, can, and we can see if we can fit them in. Um, we'd love to, to hear your feedback. Question, yeah. So the question was, if you're doing on-device development and you test it on your phone, do you get to keep, do you get to keep the application on there through the through the university program? I mean, the the, the certificate expires after a certain amount of time. I'm not sure what. It, I think the runtime certificate will expire probably in a year, mm. but at the end of the quarter, you will stop being able to develop. Right. New apps. I, so, so Paul's answer to that was that, and, and this is, we're, we're a little fuzzy on the details, but it, we think that you will no longer be able to develop and deploy applications to the phone app at the end of the quarter. Um, any apps that you've got on the device, I think that's good for a year. Um, but we can, we can try to clarify that and make sure. Is that cool? Uh, yeah, one more question. So right now, OpenGL is not slated for any of the any of the Monday, Wednesday lecture periods. We are planning on covering it in one of the optional Friday sessions. Um, obviously, if you're planning on doing a final project that's that's a game, you probably care a lot about OpenGL and and how that's going to going to fit into your into your app. Um, for plenty of other iPhone apps, you know they they never touch OpenGL. So we we didn't feel that it was central enough to cover in one of the lectures, um, but certainly. We're going to have at least one Friday session about OpenGL. Details will be forthcoming about that. Um, and if there, there are specific topics that you're interested in, uh, let us know and we can try and get someone from Apple to come down for another Friday session and maybe cover it. So yeah, just let us know. Yeah, question. Will the optional Friday sessions be on um, I don't believe so. Um, we can check, but it, it's, it's in a different room, and I'm not sure if we're going to be really configured for that. I, I think the answer is probably no. Uh, we can check, but um, I, I wouldn't bank on it. Um, uh, you know, obviously, the, the content in the Friday sessions, we're not going to be you know, quizzing you on it. It's not going to be required for any of the assignments. Um, so, yeah, question. Are you going to be covering any music or audio APIs? We are going to be covering that towards the end of the quarter. Um, it's not going to be, um, sorry, the question was, are we going to be covering any music or audio APIs? Um, that's something we're going to cover. It's not part of any of the, the presence assignments or um, any of the earlier assignments, uh, but definitely it, it, it's, it's in there at the end of the quarter, and if there's stuff that you're interested in, you, know, you can talk to us offline and we can point you in the right direction. Um, there's, again, great sample code up on developer.alpha.com that can get you, get you started with, with audio. Any other questions before we keep going? Um, and then finally, the final projects, which we've talked about a little bit, uh, last three weeks of the quarter, you can do it by yourself or with a partner. We don't want to have any unwieldy seven-person teams all trying to crowd around an iPhone. Um, but you know, groups of groups of two are great. We found that worked pretty well last last time around. Um, and it's never too early to start thinking about what you want to do. If you've got a great idea right now, I mean, you could even start working on it. 
you, you do need to run your proposal by us, and we're going to let you know more about that as we get closer to the, the final project period. Um, but we, we do need to approve your project to make sure it's not way, way, way too hard or way, way, way too easy, just kind of, you know, sanity check. We're not going to, you know, censor you or anything. Um, but some, you know, some categories to, to think about are, you know, student life apps. There's obviously the whole iStanford thing, which has been going on. Um, you know, that, that's a, a pretty obvious avenue to go down. Um, you know, educational tools, games, social software. Um, you can make use of a lot of the interesting features on the phone, like the location services, um, or, you know, anything else, really. The, the, the world is your oyster. We had a lot of really interesting projects last time that we um, couldn't have ever, you know, imagined when the class was starting. Um, and most of all, think, think of something that you or someone you know would, would like to use. I've always found that that's, you know, the best apps, the best projects come out of some need that you're familiar with, um, you know, and, and you'll probably enjoy it a lot more as well. Um, at the conclusion of the quarter, you know, one option is to sign up as an individual iPhone developer and get it up on the App Store. Uh, a bunch of our students last time around did that. They've actually got a little website, stanfordiphoneclassapps.com. Uh, maybe they'll share that with you. I don't know. What, what, the, what the deal is. But um, they were able to roll their applications out to the App Store all, all at the same time. They got some pretty good press about it. Um, I think some of them have now retired to islands in the, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so this is something, you know, obviously not required for the course, but it's something you, you can do if you're interested. I thought I saw a hand back there. No? We're good? Um, yeah, so that's the deal with the final projects. It, it, it's a little vague right now, but we'll be giving you some more handouts and um, some more info as the quarter progresses. Um, any questions about the stuff up to this point? If not, we're going to uh, talk a little bit from a very high level about the iPhone OS. Um, so here's an iPhone. Actually, we should probably update the graphic there to show a, a 3G iPhone, but it is what it is. Um, really, no discussion of the iPhone's operating system and software stack um, could be complete without talking about the, the Mac OS. Um, the two share a lot of, a lot of DNA. There's, uh, a lot that is really identical between the two platforms. Um, you know, when we were sitting down trying to figure out how to, how to architect the iPhone's software, it made sense in a lot of cases to just bring over pieces of the Mac OS and use them as is or with some, some minor modifications. Um, so if you look at the Mac OS X software stack, from, again, from a very high level, we're not getting too nitty gritty here, um, there are sort of four basic layers that, that you will see. Um, at the very bottom is the core OS, the really nitty gritty, Gnarly, I don't know why I always use those adjectives to describe, uh, you know, Unix-y stuff. But, um, you know, it, it, under the hood, it is a Unix box. It's got all the, all the things that you would expect. Um, sitting on top of that is a, is a level of uh, core services, which is more or less in, in C, and it's sort of low-level things that aren't quite, um, that, you know, applications may, may want to use, but um, aren't entirely, you know, GUI app friendly. Um, then we've got the media layer, which is all about audio, video, music, uh, uh, audio, video, images. Um, and then at the very top is Coco, which is the, the UI application framework, which, um, you know, as a Mac developer, you interact with the most when you're, when you're writing a Mac app. So for the iPhone, um, it's all basically there. I mean, there are, there are pieces that are sliced out. Um, and, but for the most part, it's, it's from a conceptual level, it's identical. Um, the big difference is that rather than Coco, you've got Coco Touch. I mean, the, the highest level, the most you know, sort of user visible, all the UI elements, that is what is most different between the two platforms. Because obviously on the iPhone, there's no mouse. There's no menu bar up at the top of the screen. Um, there, you, know, you don't have multiple windows that are layered and you're dragging windows around. Um, so it made sense to sort of maybe not entirely start fresh, but at least go at it from a fresh perspective. Um, when it came to the UI framework. So Cocoa Touch is similar, similar to, but also different from uh, Cocoa in a lot of key ways. Um, iPhone OS, obviously. Hey. So uh, let's, let's dive into each of these layers briefly, just so you know what's there. Um, we're not going to be doing any, um, any BSD programming in this course, but um, you, know, you can at least sleep well at night knowing that it's, that it's there at some level. Um, all the sort of low-level, you know, power management, um, security, keychain, um, uh, bonjour for communicating with device, other local devices. Um, all of this stuff is sort of sitting there under the hood, waiting to do your bidding. But it's it's rare that you will you will interact with it uh, directly. Going up another level, core services. As again, as I said, this is um, 
a lot of this is, is exposed to you as an application developer. Um, it's mostly written in C, um, and it's for things like you know threading. You've got standard you know POSIX threading uh, on on the iPhone, uh, SQLite. If you want to write out data to a, a local SQL database, that's there for you. Um, the address book um, is actually accessible via a low-level C API, um, although you'll you'll also see it higher up in the stack. Um, collections, things like arrays and dictionaries and strings, all that sort of stuff, lives in the core services layer. Um, another level up, we've got media. So if you're playing back video, if you're showing images, uh, audio, all that stuff is there for your, for your whatever, whatever you want to do in your application. Um, OpenGL, obviously, is part of this story as well. So if you're planning on writing the next hit iPhone game, um, this, this probably interests you quite a bit. And then finally, Cocoa Touch is, uh, again, this is going to be the main point of contact for most of you as you're, as you're writing, as you're working on an iPhone application. So things like events, uh, controls, all the little widgets, the standard widgets that appear on the screen in an iPhone application, like table views and sliders and buttons, those are all in, in Cocoa Touch. Um, things like uh, the address book. Address book, in addition to being exposed in core services, is available in Cocoa Touch as well in terms of user interface elements. So if you want to pick a person, for, um, for some use in your application. You can bring up this, this canned, ready to use UI for, for picking a person. Um, also, you know, picking an image from the camera roll or from you know, taking a picture with the camera. Um, so again, this is, this is where you're gonna be living. This is the sort of arena that you will be inhabiting for the, for the next 10 weeks in this course. Um, so that's that. Uh, speaking more to the, the Cocoa Touch area, um, you know, these, these frameworks here in the middle of this, uh, of this little diagram that we had from before, Foundation, UIKit, those are Cocoa Touch. Um, UIKit is obviously all about user interface elements, buttons, uh, controls, sliders, touches, um, views, showing things on the screen. Uh, it also includes um, some hardware APIs, so like the accelerometer, um, as uh, your phone is moved around, shaken, its orientation is changed. That's all in UIKit as well. Um, foundation is a sort of companion piece. It's under the Cocoa Touch umbrella. Um, foundation, again, both of these, both of these are in Objective C. Um, foundation is a is a counterpart to some of the pieces down lower level in core services, things like collections, arrays, and strings. But it's it's exposed via a pretty um, pretty developer friendly um, Objective C interface. Um, you know, system services for dealing with things on the file system, um, all that sort of stuff is, is in foundation. So typically not UI elements, it's, it's a little lower level than that, but it's, uh, but it's all in Objective-C. Um, it's important to mention, you know, on, on Mac OS X, you've also got foundation. Foundation on the iPhone is a, is, is a subset. There are some things which don't exist um, in the iPhone foundation, which, which do exist on Mac OS X. Um, let's take a brief little detour and talk a little bit about objects. I know you're all familiar with object-oriented programming, um, but I just want to do a quick little, quick little overview, and then we're going to do a demo um, to wrap things up in the class today. Um, so what's an object? Uh, as this slide so, uh, so wonderfully puts it, an object is a thing. Uh, actually, the thing, I guess, is the, the name of our class here. Um, this thing includes both behavior so um, it, actions that may be per performed by this object. Um, somebody can tell this object, do something, and it'll, it'll do, do whatever that thing is. Uh, it also includes state. So both behavior and state is, is encapsulated in this object. Uh, it can be things like numbers, booleans, strings, any other sort of uh, data. Um, you can also have other objects as state. So um, maybe one of your pointers in this object is to a helper object, where when you get some, some message, uh, you'll say to that helper object, hey, do this other thing that I, that I need help with. So the key takeaway here, state and behavior. Um, when you're writing an iPhone app and you've got this, you've got this object that perhaps you've created and um, you want to hook it up to other, other objects in your application, one really common, um, common mechanism that we're going to talk about a lot is the idea of outlets, especially for controller objects. Uh, we're going to talk more about model view controller as the quarter progresses. But oftentimes you'll have some, some controller object which is entirely of your own creation. And it's hooked up with some canned, out-of-the-box user interface elements. Um, 
that you want to use you know, without subclassing. You don't want to subclass a button just to make the button do something when it's clicked. So the controller, it'll have an outlet, a pointer to these user interface elements. And on, uh, in the other direction, these, these user interface elements will um, utilize a mechanism called target action, um, whereby you get this button or slider or whatever this element is, and you say to it, well, here's, here's the object that I want you to message when some event happens. And here's the message that I want you to send. Here's the method that I want you to call when the button gets clicked on or the slider gets, gets slid around. Um, so this allows these UI elements to be used out of the box in a sort of generic way uh, without requiring subclassing and um, allow you to extend the behavior. So this might seem a little abstract, um, but we're going to do a quick little demo now of a very, very basic iPhone application using the iPhone simulator. And you'll see both outlets and target action in use. So I'm going to fire up Xcode, which uh, if it's not already installed on your Mac, it'll uh, be installed as part of the iPhone SDK. And in Xcode, I'm going to go to the file menu, go new project, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm going to just choose, there, there are a bunch of different types of application templates that I can start from. If I'm writing a uh, game, maybe I want to start with the OpenGLS, or OpenGL ES application template. Um, there are some other templates which I can use, but really here I, I just want to use a window. I just want to have a window and throw a couple of controls in it. Um, so let's choose window-based application. Also, it's worth noting, um, over here on the left side of the screen, um, there are templates for iPhone OS applications, and there are also templates for Mac OS X. So when you decide that it's time to roll out you know, uh, a Mac application that goes along with your iPhone application, this is the same place where you'll, you'll get started. So we're going to select window-based application. Hit choose, and um, let's give it a name, slider test. So at this point, we've got a new project in Xcode. And if you look over here on the left side of the screen, you'll notice that we've got um, all of our files. So we've got a couple of, of uh, Objective-C classes that Xcode has automatically created for us. Um, we've got targets, which in this case is, this will just be the application that we're building, and all sorts of other app development, IDE type things like you know, build warnings, um, you can do project search, uh, breakpoints when you're debugging. All that stuff sort of lives over here on the left side of, um, of the Xcode window. Um, and really, the, where we're going to spend most of our time during this demo is in mainwindow.zib. Um, zib stands for, well, the IB part stands for inter interface builder. This is an interface builder document. Um, and this is where we're going to lay out some of our UI and, and hook it up to our, the code that we've written. So I'm going to double click here. This is going to launch uh, Interface Builder. Hopefully. Hey, there it is. And as you'll see here, we've basically just got an empty window. Um, you'll see a little simulated status bar like you would see um, when you're actually running your iPhone application. And this is where we can lay out some UI elements and start to hook them up to one another. Um, if I go to the Tools menu and select Library up at the top of the screen, it'll show me a whole library of, of UI widgets that I can drag into this application. So things like progress views, um, page controls, labels, text fields, buttons. I can just drag them out of here and um, position them wherever I want them to go in my app. You'll notice these, these blue guides show up, which sort of give you hints as to the, um, the correct positioning for things, um, spacing in an iPhone application. Um, I'm sure many of you have, have used an app where the, the UI developer just sort of threw things onto the screen. The spacing just, just didn't feel right. And you know, maybe the app worked, but it just kind of gave you this creepy feeling where you know, the, the, the text fields were a little too close together. The, the guides will, will help you to sort of be consistent with, with the Mac OS X um, human interface guidelines. So I can drag this thing around. I can resize it. I'm just going to throw it up there at the top of the screen. And I'm going to drag out a couple of, of labels as well. Um, we're going to uh, customize the, the text in these labels. Um, I can double click and edit the text. And here I'm going to type value. And I'm going to drag out another label, make sure that it's all aligned. And uh, let's just type in zero for now. 
So you've got these widgets on the screen. They're not hooked up to anything yet. So we need to, uh, you know, somehow uh, connect these to the, the brains of our application logic. So in order to do that, I'm going to um, just drag an object out into my interface builder document. Um, and I'm going to get info on this thing. I'm going to go to the tools menu, go to the inspector, um, tap on the fourth tab, which is the identity inspector. And um, I'm going to define a custom class here. I'm just going to call this thing controller. This is where, again, the, the, the brains of our application are going to live. And this controller object, again, like we, like we mentioned earlier, um, objects have behavior and they have state. So um, for the behavior, we're going to add, add an action. And we're going to call it um, slider changed. We're going to give it a colon. Um, you'll learn more about what the colon means when we talk more about Objective-C. This means that it's a method that takes a single parameter. We're also going to give it a couple of outlets, which are our state, or you know, instance variables. Um, these outlets, uh, the first one we're going to call it slider. And it's going to be, the type is going to be UI slider. The second one is going to be, let's just call it uh, label. And it's going to be, oh, I guess that didn't stick, UI label. OK, so we've got our, our action and our couple of outlets defined here for this custom class. So now what we want to do is actually hook up these outlets and the action um, to the objects in our window right here. So um, back in the inspector, if I click on this second tab, um, it's, the, it's the Connections Inspector. If you go to the Tools, tools menu, um, you'll see Connections Inspector is, is right up there. Um, and you'll notice I've got my two outlets listed now. And there are these little circles to the left which I can use to, to hook this object up to um, elements in my, in my UI. So for the slider, I'm going to click and hold and drag out here. And you'll see um, it actually highlights when I go over a slider. It does, it does type checking and figures out, well, I, I shouldn't be able to hook up the slider outlet to this UI label, but I can hook it up to the slider. So I do that, and I hook up the other label, or the other outlet to this label here, because we want to customize its value. Um, so those are both hooked up now. Um, the final thing that we want to do is, whenever um, the slider's value changes, we want to tell, uh, tell the controller about it. So, if I select here, and um, again in the connections inspector, because we're, we're, the inspector always shows the selected object on the screen. So we, when we've got this guy selected, um, it'll show me the relevant values for that object. If we've got the slider selected, um, then I can see things like the minimum and maximum values. Actually, let's make this 0 to 100. And um, we want to hook up the value changed outlet to the slider changed method on the controller. So whenever the value changes on the slider, it'll, tell our, our, it'll send that message to our controller. Um, with that done, we've done most of the work that we're going to do in IB. We still need to write a little bit of code. So um, there's a little shortcut that you can take in Interface Builder. If you've defined an object, um, a custom object as we have here, I don't know why that didn't stick. Oh, man. Did I just break that? No. I stuck it on the window. Great. Um, let's just type those in again. Slider changed. Slider label. How fast can I do this demo and have it still work? Uh, value change. Oh, that's still hooked up. That's kind of cool. Um, great. Hopefully, I didn't break anything there. Um, so now I'm going to select the controller, and I'm going to say write class files. This isn't something you're going to do super often, but it is kind of a, a handy little demo assistant. Um, this is going to create the Objective-C header and implementation file um, for this custom class that I've just, I've just defined. And it's going to fill in the, both the outlets and the action method that we, that we defined. So if I write this out, it's going to be called controller. Uh, yes, I want to save. Yes, I want it to be part of my application. Uh, so now if we go back here into Xcode, you'll notice there are a couple of new files, controller.h and controller.m. Um, controller.h is the header. Um, we want the superclass to be nsobject, which is our sort of typical superclass. 
Um, we've got a couple of instance variables for the label and the slider. And we've got an action method um, for when the slider changes its value. Uh, from here, if I switch over to the implementation, you'll notice there's this method that we've, we've got to fill in. We've got to make it do something. Whenever the slider changes, we want to update the value of that label. Does that make sense? So um, what I'm going to do here, and, and take this as, as a sort of leap of faith, uh, we're going to teach you more all about Objective-C and all the different methods that you, that you might want to call. I'm going to say label dot text equals um, slider dot value. Actually, we want to, we want to create a string. So uh, again, just sort of smile and nod as I'm typing this. You don't know anything about NS string. You're not supposed to. You didn't miss something in lecture where I explained what it was. Uh, string with format. And we're going to use a standard um, uh, C style format string here. So this is going to take the float value of the slider and um, format it with one, with one decimal point. Um, so if I save that, and then I, uh, I can hit Apple B, or I can click on this little hammer up here to build the project. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't set the, I erased it beforehand. UI slider. OK, we're all good now. Um, hopefully. <laughs> so again, we're setting the label's text to the slider's value with a little bit of string format wrapping around it. Um, now if I build and run here, um, I can hit Apple R in Xcode. It'll fire up the iPhone simulator. Um, again, I don't know why the, the look of that one hasn't been updated to the iPhone 3G. And da -da -da, we crashed. Um, <laughs> Probably because of that custom class that I set on the window. No. Did I, did I set the controller anyplace else, Paul? <coughs> Appears to be all good here. We might have a crash course in debugging. Or actually, um, I, wrote, I cheated and wrote this up earlier. So maybe I can just show you the completed project and post that on the website. Let's do that. So documents, uh, slider, yeah. Pretend that never happened. Um, looks surprisingly similar. Hey, that's better. OK, so we've got that slider that we laid out. It's uh, sized at the top of the screen, just like we had it in Interface Builder. And we've got these two UI labels on the screen as well. So now if I drag, uh, you'll notice the value automatically, auto magically, well, maybe not automatically, uh, gets updated with the value. Um, so one line of code, we got a little sort of hello world type UI going on here. So this sort of hopefully illustrates how you can use the out of the box UI widgets from UIKit and customize their behavior um, along with you know, whatever you're trying to do in your application. So not a lot of code, and you can get an iPhone application up and running. Uh, we'll go back to the slides just for a little bit. Uh, so what did we just see, aside from the, the fact that it crashed and blew up? Um, beginner's luck. So the, one, of the, one of the main concepts that you're going to see over and over, actually, in this class with application development is to keep, keep the brains, keep the keep the custom behavior in your application separate from the, from the sort of UI classes you get from UIKit. Um, you can connect uh, controllers to views using outlets, and uh, then use target action to customize the behavior when those interface elements are, are interacted with. Um, and that helps you to avoid subclassing where it might not be needed. Um, any questions about the, the demo that we saw? Again, the, I'm going to throw the code up on the website so you can play around with it. Maybe I'll even put both of them up there, and you know whoever figures out what I messed up in the first one, gets a, gets a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> We're cool. It wasn't totally rocket science, but uh, it's good to just sort of have a first glance at the tools, the language, um, and all that other fun stuff. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up for, for class today. Uh, if there aren't any other questions about logistics or what we just saw, um, we'll see you on Monday.
For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.